Good morning, everyone. Um, here we are with another one of the Nomen workshop tutorials for After Effects. Um, this one is uh, pretty simple and straightforward. It's not gonna take that uh, long of a time, I hope. Um, it basically involves taking the passes rendered from 3D, in this case from Maya, and comping them in After Effects to see what the possibilities are. Um, we're gonna do a lot of that, obviously, and um, since this is a Nomen school of visual effects, not really Nomen school of motion graphics, so we're gonna try to do both uh, as much as we can. But the first thing that we'll uh, that we'll talk about is um, getting these passes out of Maya into After Effects, and what what these passes actually are. Um, there are uh, several options that that you can do, and in this case, it's just this sphere. So. Um, in this case we have rendered shadow, we have rendered a diffuse, and we have rendered a specular, and then there's an ambient occlusion doing a contact on the sphere. And uh, this is one way to break up your render. So basically the material properties uh, and the material attributes of, of the object of the material. On the other hand, you might want to actually render out the lights separately in a scene, so you have complete control over those. In fact, what you'd really want to do if you're in film production most probably is that you will render out specular, diffuse and shadow for each light individually. Um, like I said in a previous tutorial, uh, uh, the motto is a lazy TD is a good TD and whatever gets the job done quicker and better is the way that you need to do it. There's no need to uh, fight in 3D to get the final result, like some sort of a purist result, uh, we need to get the shot out and we need the shot looking good and that control that we get in compositing from rendering these layers out and, um, and color correcting them and playing with transparencies and so on and so forth is not uh, that easily available in 3D, so that's why we do it in, in a compositing package. So as simple as this, the passes would be a background and then we have a diffuse render of the sphere so it's basically just the texture uh, and the lighting on the sphere without any specularity and reflection and uh, here is where if you go into the interpret footage you will actually set this to pre-multiplied or unpre-multiplied like that, like we've talked about before. Depending on how you've rendered it, and usually, not usually, but really what you want to do is from um, 3D render uh, straight, unpre-multiplied, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a, another tutorial that is pretty short, but will show you why we want to render unpre-multiplied from, uh, from 3D. Here is our specular. When you bring your specular on top, this is what it's going to look. This is basically the reflective properties of the of the material. Now, don't get confused with the reflective in 3D and reflective in real world. In real world, the reflection and specularity is the same, right? Is the amount of um, reflection that the object has and uh, the amount of bounce back. Um, we break it up in 3D just so that we have more control and the easy way to put specularity on top of the diffuse is to just add it, add it or screen it. And there you go. On top of it all, we have an inverted ambient occlusion render that we can put to multiply and then invert it. Channel invert. Okay, just like we've talked before, multiplication works just like a multiplication. So if this is multiplying with black, then it's going to turn black. If it's multiplying with white, which is one, then it's just going to remain the same. And so um, here it is, and now we have absolute control over everything. So let's say if we want to make the, the ambient occlusion a little less uh, less strong then we could just turn obviously transparency down or we can blur it or we can drop some levels on it 
and play with that however we want to, um, to get it done and then um, the specularity it's more than uh, common to uh, to go over and over in um, in a film context when when you're working um, to make say the specular a little brighter or a little darker or a little warmer or a little cooler and you know here you go instead of just going and re-rendering in uh, in Maya or whatever other 3D software you're using, you just change this in real time. So these are the benefits of uh, rendering stuff in layers in um, in 3D and bringing them in in compositing and in After Effects. And the same thing here. And change these colors as easy as that. Um, now this is one degree of uh, separation so to speak so right now we have broken up the material properties the next um, the next step would be to break down the lights and your typical lighting setup is going to be let me make a black solid so i can write on it oops Your typical lighting setup is going to be if this is your character. Now you will have one light, which is your main light source, which is going to be your key light. Let's say key underscore LT. And since obviously in 3D by default, if you're not using GI or Final Gather, the light does not bounce around. What you're going to be getting is you're going to be lighting only this side of the character over here from the key light. So this will be your main source, right? The sun, the moon, the, the, the big chandelier in the room, whatever the, the light source, the main light source is coming from. Now, obviously, in real life, light bounces around and hits the character again. So in 3D, we're going to have to match that and this is not a lighting class but really quick over here that will be what we call a fill light fill dot lf in this case which would be screen left and this one is just key light or it can be you know if you have more than one key which is possible this can be key dot rt for example and it's key right and um the fill light from the left is going to fill all of that area which would otherwise be completely black on the character. Uh, you might have to have another fill light from over here and this would be fill.rt and we're talking uh, LF and RT left and right we're not talking when we're talking about left and right we're not really talking about the the character left and right we're talking about the screen left and right so get used to that because that like can can become a confusion but standard when you're talking you're talking about screen left or right and not uh, character left or right so then um, what else do you have maybe he's in a white floor right so if he's walking in a white floor then you might want a bounce light even if he's not walking in a white floor some light gets bounced from the floor onto the character so that's a bounce and this can be bounce bottom um, you have other specialty lights then at this point which might be rim lights that are coming sort of from behind and this would be rim underscore LF and then another one coming from here that is rim RT and these are the lights that are gonna delineate the character over here make sort of you know a light over here and an edge over here so that it separates the character from the background now be careful not to put a lot of these because then your character is going to start looking cartoony unless that is the the desired effect that you want and usually what um, the other thing that 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 I have that we have when uh, lighting characters is we'll have like some special spotlight that would be for the eyes it will be like an eye spec RT and then maybe another one over here I underscore spec dot L LF left so <clears throat> as you can see all of these lights is obviously just like we rendered specular and diffuse and shadow separately it's a very very good idea to have them um, rendered in um, 
to have them rendered separately because the comments that you're gonna get are okay well the fill left is a little bit too warm or the fill right is a little bit too cool um, the changes that you need to do in 3d is if you get a comment that says push the key light a little bit further higher up or you know this many degrees to the left or to the right that you have to re-render but if everything else has not changed and the only comment that you get is to push the key light over there then you only render the key light you don't render all of these other lights which will make the render go faster and if your comment is well the specular highlight in the eyes is a little too bright or it's too blue then you just go in compositing and you change this eye spec left and right and there you go it's done it's almost in real time so this would be the next step and that's what is here let's just leave this here and here we have the key light and obviously we can have a hue saturation on it and do whatever we want with it right and turn it whatever color we want then uh, what you'll notice here is that I have all my other lights as add and the lights in in CG land like say if you're in Maya or whatever software you are are additive right so if let's take the fills first and I have three I have one fill from the left and this would be coming in as normal like this this is fill from the left you want to add it this is one fill from the right that is some bluish color and this is a fill low that is coming from the bottom as you'll see I have some of these colored like that is blue this is not colored um, depending on uh, which place you work and how the pipeline is set in 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 some companies um, in some places um, for example at rhythm and hues on one project that I was working at we weren't even coloring the lights in um, in 3d we were just rendering lights at intensity one at like full intensity and at color white because you can always color this in compositing and always you can then turn the transparency down um, on the light so if you wanted more or less of it you can just turn it down so there was no point in doing it in 3d and then um, if it's white then you can just like tint it or color correct it to whatever color you need so if I were to do a hue saturation and then just colorize it and there you go it's warmer like that there's the fill all right And there's a fill from the bottom, the bounce, right there. And say I want to make this more pronounced or less pronounced. Here it is. We want to tint it some sort of color, like the like the ground. whatever so there it is now uh, when lighting keep in mind and this is just a simple example but really you do not want to have this because then it shows that you have this many this many lights or spotlights in the scene you want these transitions to be um, to be smooth but for this example it should be fine and here is like one of our rims so this is rim left and it's tinted orange but it doesn't necessarily have to in this case as you can see I'm not rendering the background and the sphere separately that would be another uh, another uh, another extra step and so let's put this to add and there you go we have rim left effects color correction levels like that we have a rim right over here and that's also added and then on top of this we have an ambient occlusion pass that is just multiplied and we can tweak the levels on this to make it as strong as or as soft as it's necessary so as you can see the amount of control that we have this way is 
is enormous it's great and it's it's completely necessary so so far we have broken up the material material properties and we have broken up the lights what we'll see is then we will break the material properties for each light so the fill for example if this was um, a shinier object sphere then we would break the specular highlight um, the specular separately and the diffuse separately just for this light so we have control over that plus we want to render this object separately so that we can control the lighting on the floor separately from the sphere or at the same time we will render what are called RGB mats which will be able to isolate the sphere and the ground separately and in this case it's just a sphere and a ground but you know when you have a character you'll be talking about an eye the eyebrow the eyelashes the left nostril the right nostril etc etc the buttons on the shirt and so on so this is a very um, quick introduction to what these layers are going to be uh, looking like when they come out of uh, 3d and we're going to have more tutorials to go more in depth in this